All right, so let's. I have the TL eighty eight six six hooked up. This Chinese thing. Um, the good thing about this is you don't need an external power supply, um, and it's definitely small. Let's go ahead and select our chip. So the other thing is the search is pretty decent. If we wanted to search for twenty seven two five six, and we need um, Fujitsu, and it tells you you know whether it's a. Um, I know it's hard to see here. Let's see if I zoom in. Oh, that's even worse, huh? You can see that it says um, you know dip twenty eight. But they also make PLCC versions of this as well. They make a, a CMOS version, so 27C256, um, etc. So, um, pretty easy to select the right trip. Select the right chip. Um, now, if we look down here, look at our, our voltages here. So, our options. Now, the nice thing is we can actually change them if we wanted to. I'm pretty sure um, I'm pretty sure it was what 12.5 volts right the last one was 12.7 was our VPP so the fact that you know by default it had it at 12 I'm gonna leave it at the default I guess um, the other thing is our our right our VPP right I don't know why it says VDD but whatever um, is 5.5 volts and our only options are to jump from 5.5 to 6.5. So obviously not ideal because we know that it should be, according to the um, data sheet, it should be 6 volts. And 6.5 will be too high. Maybe 5.5 will be too low. I don't know. The pulse delay, 200 um, microseconds. I think we had it at 1 millisecond for the other guys. Um, based off the algorithm they were using, which would be this 1000 here. So I, you know, these guys you load up, they have different settings and stuff. Obviously for the uh, VCC um, to read the chip, you want five volts. So we're gonna leave it just like it is um, by default. Um, and we'll put in our chip. Let's see here. Yep, MBM. And we're going to see. I got the, the chip right there. Zoom out. We're going to. Um, what are we going to do? Device. Blank check. Oh, we had. I put it in wrong. That's kind of nice. It has a pin detect error. So you can see here. I got used to putting it at the bottom, like for the GQ and the others. It needs to go at the top on this. So let's hit blank check. Okay, and it is blank, is what it says. There you go. All right, and now let's go ahead and we want to mess with our hex here. Now this part is pretty easy. I, I mean, I like this. You know, it's pretty easy to deal with here. So, start address, end address is correct, and we're going to fill it with all zeros. You see that? And then we're going to write the chip. So let's see if it writes. program now it does do a nice little check there and it looks like it is programming this thing so I guess there's some some range I guess as far as you know what voltage is but it's definitely not if it's doing what it says here it's definitely not um, what the data sheet says for this chip and it tells you how long it took so definitely you know a lot faster than the EMPs 
and it did obviously it programmed it and I like the fact that you can actually change the settings here um, so we could actually have chose 12.5 and you know we could have we could actually hurt the chip if we go higher there but whatever it worked with 12 volts which is interesting who knows we can the range here is from 9 to 18 now I'll show you a couple um, a couple interesting things so let's say oh, I'm running out of time <laughs> I'll be back mm, dang it sucks anyway I'm back um, I have a few minutes left of battery here um, but anyway let's say that you wanted to at least read one of the older chips so if I came in here and I wanted to read a 2716 now if I go to Intel we could definitely read the chip so you might not be able to program it because it only says it only goes up to 18 volts and I doubt 18 volts is going to program a 2716 um, which needs 25 volts um, but you could definitely read it at 5 volts which is nice now one thing I did notice here is if I come to if I wanted to do a TMS chip, it says that I can do a TMS. No, I can't do it. Let's see. TMS 2716? I don't think so. I'm pretty sure that's a tri voltage chip. Um, so I don't think it's going to read it or write it. And if I came in here and did TMS 2516, I don't even get anything right so it can't do you can't even read 2516 so you're kind of crap out of luck as far as unless you build an adapter um, to read chips now if you did want to I think that basically you know you could get by with just this thing and it does do pals and gals which um or no it does gals I think I don't know if it does any there's lattice and you can see it does the lattice gals, which is more than what the GQ does. And the other thing it does are these logic ICs. So if I come in here and let's look at, um, I have a logic chip here. I have a, let's do a 74LS245. 74LS, um, might have to just scroll. We want to look at a 245 chip. I'm going to take it out. Put it in my reader here. Now this is, this was pulled. I don't know. I don't know if I've checked this one before. And we can hit test and test this LS chip. So this is actually a, a little bit nicer, a little bit more functionality. Um, and it tested the chip, it says it tested it okay. Which is nice to have if you are, you know, doing a, some troubleshooting of uh, chips and you pull them out and you wanted to see if they were bad or not. Obviously you can't test them in circuit this way. Um, but if you if you thought they were bad, you can test them. It also does some, some uh, NVRAM, I think, tests and stuff like that too. Let me see. Yeah, you can test some uh, wind bond, um, some standard RAM. You can test 6116s, which is kind of nice. I think those are like might be in pole position or something. Uh, some some different boards use those. Maybe 6264 is also used. Um, I think Dallas 1220 is an NV RAM. So yeah, it's pretty decent as far as that goes. So to me, I think. I mean, this one is the one that I think I would keep on the bench more, um, just for the quick and dirty stuff. I'm trying to think of it does have a, a self test as well, so it will run through and test all its pins. You don't know what it's actually doing, and it does have a pin detect. So it does if it, you're about to um, throw some voltage on a pin, you shouldn't. It should uh, alert you to that as well. So I think that's it, guys. Um, 
anyway the fastest was the isa card i think the most robust is probably the emps that i have um i don't trust and the moral of the story is i don't think any of these guys have uh, maybe the emps are the best as far as knowing what voltages you're supposed to be programming with um depending on what chip you put in here a lot of times they just I can't move around now. Um, a lot of times you don't get to see that. So definitely double check the data sheet and make sure you're programming at the correct voltage. And if you can't burn a chip, that's probably why. Uh, um, that's probably why. I don't know why I can't move my cursor. That um, the chip's not programming correctly is because you're using the wrong voltages. So I like the TL866. It's cheaper than the GQ. It does more with the TTL. You can get by with like adapters like this. If you need to program proms, you can just, um, I think Brian at arcadecabinets.com um, makes, you know, sells these things. So you can put in a, a wind bond chip and program it. You can use it to read proms as well. So if you needed to, you could get by with just this sucker here programming um, newer chips to replace older ones and stuff and doing ROM eliminators and stuff like that. But if you want to go old school and use DOS and stuff and use some of the old school programmers, then the EMPs are probably are really good um, as far as cheap goes. So, all right, that's it guys. See you later.